Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome. Today's topic is the 1918 Cleveland Indians AL MLB baseball season. Again, the Tribe was playing in the American League, the junior circuit of Major League Baseball, and home games in Cleveland were played at Dunn Field, also known as League Park. The Indians had, a, had an outstanding year in 1918. Their record was 73-54. and 54. They finished in second place, winning percentage of 575. Very good. Two and a half games out of first. First place team was the Boston Red Sox, who were 75-51, and 51, winning percentage of 595. Second place, the Cleveland Indians, 73-54. and 54. Third place, the Washington Senators, 72-56. and 56. Fourth place, the New York Yankees, 60 and 63. Fifth place, the St. Louis Browns, 58 and 64. Sixth place, the Chicago White Sox, 57 and 67. Seventh place, the Detroit Tigers, 55 and 71. Eighth place, the Philadelphia Athletics, 52 and 76, winning percentage of 406, 24 games out of first. Now, the United States was at war in 1918. It was the First World War. On July 19th, Secretary of State Newton Baker ruled that baseball was not an essential occupation, that all players of draft age between ages 21 and 30 were subject to a work, work or fight rule. Many of the players, the MLB players, left for work in the shipyards and defense industries. Players uh, and the Indians lost a number of players for part or all of the season, including Bill Wamsgans, Guy Morton, Ed Klepfer, Otis Lambeth, Jack Billings, Lou Gusto, and Joe Morris. The regular season was cut short because of the war and ended on September 2, and the World Series started at that time. So the this mean, meant the Indians lost a chance to catch the Red Sox. So they, you know, they had a month in the season left that, that was cut out, and we, we didn't have a chance to, to try to, uh, to finish in first. Elmer, uh, former Cleveland Indians, Elmer Smith and Joe Harris, or current or former, were in France during the First World War. Ed, Ed Klepfer survived several weeks of combat lost the capacity to pitch as a result of his military service. Lou Gusto was gassed in the First World War in combat. He retired for two seasons, but then returned to Cleveland in 1921. The Tribe had a doubleheader sweep of the Yankees on July 4th at League Park, so that was a big day, and it put the Tribe in first place. Attendance dropped to 295,515 because of the war-shortened season. However, they led the league. In an early game in Detroit, half the team was out with the flu, and Jack Onslow was in left field in a tough game. Cleveland sports writer Henry Edwards got excited and went to the dugout and, and spoke to the uh, Cleveland manager, and he said, quote, Get that Onslow out of there before he ruins Combe, that's the pitcher, and loses the game. Now, the tribe manager, Lee Fall, was a very easygoing fellow, and he said that he didn't have any outfielder on the bench. And this a sports writer responded, quote, I saw Smokey Joe Wood playing the outfield in spring training. Why don't you try him? He's better than Onslow. Full nodded his head and turned to say something to Wood. But by that time, Joe, Smokey Joe Wood was running toward the outfield. He'd heard my raised voice. Again, Lee Full was the tribe manager in 1918. And he was the manager from 1915 to 1919, a very good Fine manager, a good guy, very easygoing, and a good baseball man. Now, the lineup, we had Steve O'Neill was back at catcher, tremendous player. He hit 242, eight doubles, seven triples, a home run, 35 RBIs, five stolen bases in 114 games. And O'Neill had a long stint in Cleveland from 1911 to 1923. And then he was the tribe manager from 1935 to 1937. Steve O'Neill. At first base, we had Doc Johnston, who batted 227 with 12 doubles, 2 triples, 25 RBIs, 12 stolen bases in 74 games. And Johnston was with Cleveland from 1912 to 1914, and then from 1918 to 1921. Bill Wamsgans was at second base. 
Rams Gantz batted 295, 15 doubles, 2 triples, 40 RBIs, 16 stolen bases in 87 games. Rams Gantz was with Cleveland from 1914 to 1923, and the Tribe lost him on July 25th when he was drafted for service in the First World War. Ray Chapman was at shortstop. Chapman batted 267, 19 doubles, 8 triples, a home run, 32 RBIs, 35 stolen bases in 128 games. Chapman was with Cleveland from 1912 to 1920. In the First World War, he enrolled in the Naval Auxiliary Reserve as a second-class seaman and sailed the Great Lakes on the H.H. Rogers uh, uh, ship. And he said, quote, It is one of the greatest experiences of my life, cruising around on the lakes. There, was naval, there were Naval Reserve track competitions, that, and he won the 100-yard dash with a time of 10.8 seconds. He was the captain of the football and baseball teams in the Naval Reserve. After the First World War ended, Chapman was mustered out of the service, and his commanding officer, Lieutenant J.H. Clark, uh, wrote this, quote, We could easily see why Chapman was said to never have an enemy in baseball the way he handled himself while attending the school. Chappie always acted a gentleman and endeared himself to every gob and officer on the ship. By 1918, Chapman was engaged to Kathleen Daly, a daughter of the wealthy Cleveland oil man Martin Daly, whose family lived on Millionaire's Row on Euclid Avenue in Cleveland. Ray Chapman. Joe Evans was at third base. Evans batted 263 with six doubles, seven triples, a home run, 22 RBIs, 7 stolen bases in 79 games, and Evans was with Cleveland from 1915 to 1922. Joe Evans. Smokey Joe Wood was in left field. Wood had been the tremendous starting pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, and now he was converted to the outfield. He could no longer pitch. He had a tremendous season for the Tribe in left field, hit 296, 22 doubles, 4 triples, 5 home runs, 66 RBIs, Eight stolen bases in 119 games, and Wood was with Cleveland from 1917 to 1922. Late in the season, he hit a home run at the Polo Grounds against the Yankees. and he, As a result, he was given six pairs of socks by a local hosiery shop. And so he made this, tran- this very successful and unusual transition from the pitcher's mound to the outfield. The Cleveland Plain Dealer, re- Plain Dealer reported, quote, once an idol on the mound where he hurled no-hit games, won a pennant and a World Series, Joe as an outfielder today spark, sparked as brilliantly as Tris Speaker, Smokey Joe Wood. In center field, the Tribe had Tris Speaker. Speaker batted 318 with 33 doubles, 11 triples, 61 RBIs, 27 stolen bases, and 127 games. Speaker was with Cleveland from 1916 to 1926. He led the league in doubles. Speaker joined the U.S. Navy after the season for the war effort and trained to be a pilot at MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He flew over the Charles River and got his his pilot's wings. However, the war ended in November, so he saw no action in France. Tris Speaker. Brago Roth was in right field. Roth batted 283 with 21 doubles, 12 triples, a home run, 59 RBIs, 36 stolen bases, and 106 games. And Roth was with Cleveland from 1915 to 1918. So this was the end of his time in Cleveland. He continued in the major leagues until 1921. Brago Roth. Now on the bench we had Terry Turner, who was a spare infielder. Turner batted 249 with 58 hits. In 233 at-bats, 7 doubles, 2 triples, 23 RBIs, 6 stolen bases in 74 games. Turner was with Cleveland from 1904 to 1918. So this was his last year of 14 years with Cleveland. He continued in the major leagues for one more year until 1919. Terry Turner. Jack Graney played some outfield. Graney batted 237 with 42 hits and 177 at-bats. Seven doubles, four triples, nine RBIs, three stolen bases in 70 games. Graney was with Cleveland starting in 1908 and then 1910 to 1922. And he was the Tribe radio broadcaster from 1932 to 1953. Jack Graney. 
Ed Miller played some first base. Miller batted 229 with 22 hits and 96 at bats, four doubles, three triples, three RBIs, two stolen bases in 32 games. Miller was from Anvil, Pennsylvania. He died in Lebanon, Pennsylvania in 1980 at age 91. His career average was 195 with 12 RBIs. Miller played for the St. Louis Browns in 1912 and 1914 and the Cleveland Indians in 1918. He also played in the minor leagues for the Waterbury Invincibles, the Memphis Turtles, the Jersey City Skeeters, the New Haven White Wings, the Buffalo Bisons, and the New Orleans Pelicans. Ed Miller. Rip Williams also played some first base. Williams batted 239 with 17 hits and 71 at bats, two doubles, two triples, seven RBIs, two stolen bases in 28 games. Williams was from Carthage, Illinois. He died in Keokuk, Iowa in 1933 at age 51. Career average of 265 with two home runs, 145 RBIs, five, 51 doubles, and 27 stolen bases. Mill, uh, Williams played for the Boston Red Sox, Washington Senators, and Cleveland Indians between 1911 and 1918. He was a catcher first baseman. He also played in the minor leagues for the Terra Hot Hottentots, the Buffalo Bisons, and the Baltimore Orioles. Rip Williams. Pinch Thomas was a spare catcher. Thomas batted 247 with 18 hits and 73 at bats, a triple, five RBIs, and 32 games. Thomas was from Camp Point, Illinois. He died in Modesto, California in 1953 at age 65. Career average of 237 with two home runs and 102 RBIs, 27 stolen bases, and eight triples and 12. Uh, 27 doubles, eight triples, and 12 stolen bases. He appeared as himself in the 1928 movie Warming Up. He won four World Series titles with the 1912, 1915, and 1916 Red Sox and the 1920 Cleveland Indians. He was at the Boston Red Sox from 1912 to 1917 and the Cleveland Indians from 1918 to 1921. In the minor leagues, he played for the Oakland Oaks and the Portland Beavers. Pinch Thomas. Al Halt was an infielder. Halt batted 174 with 12 hits and 69 at-bats, scored nine runs, two doubles, an RBI, four stolen bases in 26 games. Halt was from Sandusky, Ohio. He died in Sandusky in 1973 at age 82. Career average of 239 with six home runs and 90 RBIs. Halt played for the Brooklyn Tip Tops from 1914 to 1915 and the Cleveland Indians in 1918. In the minor leagues, he played for the Beaumont Oilers, the Kansas City Blues, and the San Antonio Bears. Al Halt. Bob Besher played some outfield. Besher batted 333, 20 hits and 60 at bats, scored 12 runs. Two doubles, a triple, six RBIs, three stolen bases in 25 games. Besher was from London, Ohio. He died in London, Ohio in 1942 at age 58. A career average of 258 with 28 home runs, 345 RBIs, and 428 stolen bases. Very good. Besher played for the Cincinnati Reds, New York Giants, St. Louis Cardinals, and Cleveland Indians between 1908 and 1918. So this was the end of his MLB career. He was the four-time stolen base leader in the National League from 1909 to 1912. The National League runs scored leader in 1912. That same year, he finished fifth in the MVP voting. He died in a car accident. He was hit, his car was hit by an oncoming train. Played in the minor leagues for the Milwaukee Brewers and the Wichita Falls Sputters. Bob Besher. Marty Cavanaugh played some first base. Cavanaugh batted 211 with eight hits and 38 at bats, scored four runs, two doubles, six RBIs, a stolen base in 13 games, and Cavanaugh was with Cleveland from 1916 to 1918. This was the end of his MLB career. Marty Cavanaugh. Gus Getz played some third base. Getz batted 133 with two hits and 15 at bats. Scored two runs, had a double, walked four times, struck out once in six games. Getz was from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He died at, in Red Bank, New Jersey in 1969 at age 79. Career average of 238 with two home runs and 93 RBIs. 
Getz played for the Boston Doves, the Brooklyn Robins, Cincinnati Reds, Cleveland Indians, and Pittsburgh Pirates between 1909 and 1918. He won a World Series in 1916, or played in a World Series in 1916 with Brooklyn and had one at bat. In the minor leagues, he played for the Toledo Mudheads, the Scranton Miners, the Newark Bears, and the Elmira Colonels. Gus Getz. Jack Farmer played some outfield. Farmer batted 222, two hits and nine at bats. He scored a run, had an RBI, two stolen bases in seven games. Farmer was from Granville, Tennessee. He died in Columbia, Louisiana, in 1970 at age 77. Career average of 269 with 15 RBIs. Farmer played for the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1916 and the Cleveland Indians in 1918. He went to Cumberland University in Lebanon, Tennessee. In the minor leagues, he played for the Salt Lake City Bees, the Selma River Rats, the Nashville Voles, and the Louisville Colonels. Jack Farmer. Eddie Onslow was another outfielder. Onslow batted 167. He had one hit and six at bats, struck out once in two games. Onslow was from Meadville, Pennsylvania. He died in Denison, Ohio in 1981 at age 88. Career average of 232 with one home run and 22 RBIs. Onslow played for the Detroit Tigers between 1912 and 1913, and the Cleveland Indians in 1918, and the Washington Senators in 1927. He had seven outstanding years with the Toronto Maple Leafs in the minor leagues. He also played for the Providence Grays and the Newark Bears in the minors. Eddie Onslow. Germany Schaefer played some second base. Schaefer batted five times, did not have a hit, scored two runs, had a stolen base in one game. Schaefer was from Chicago, Illinois. He died in Saranac Lake, New York in 1919 at age 43. Career average of 257 with 972 hits, 308 RBIs. Schaefer played for the Chicago Cubs, the Detroit Tigers, Washington Senators, the New York Pepper, New York Yankees, and Cleveland Indians between 1901 and 1918. He played in two World Series with the Tigers. In the the first and third game, uh, in in one game, uh, there was batters on first and third. Uh, There was a double steal. Schaefer stole second. They were hoping for for a throw home, and that didn't happen. So Schaefer stole first and thought he'd try it again. And trying to get the runner to the catcher to throw to second, so the runner from third could could score. And a, as a result, there was the Schaefer rule that the uh, runner on second could not a uh, runner on a base could not go back to the previous base. He uh, so this is in the 1913 World World uh, Tour. He barnstorm. Uh, uh, made stops in what's now uh, Sri Lanka, formerly Ceylon. He made friends with Sir Thomas Lipton there. He was a baseball clown, and he inspired the movie Take Me Out to the Ball Game with Gene Kelly and Frank Sinatra. He died of tuberculosis at age 43. Played in the minor leagues for the Colorado Springs Millionaires. In the book The Glory of Their Times, Davy Jones said this, quote, I played with Germany Schaefer on the Chicago Cubs in 1902. And again on the Detroit Tigers later on. What a man. What stunts he could pull. I used to laugh at the guy till I cried. Far and away the funniest man I ever saw. He beat Charlie Chaplin any day of the week. On the 1906 Tigers, Schaefer was a pinch hitter. He faced the grandstand and spoke to the crowd and said, quote, Ladies and gentlemen, you are now looking at Herman Schaefer, better known as Herman the Great acknowledged by one and all to be the greatest pinch hitter in the world. I am now going to hit the ball into the left field bleachers. Thank you. And he proceeded to hit a home run. After doing so, he, when he got to first, he slid into first and yelled, quote, Schaefer leads at the quarter. He slid into second base and said, Schaefer leads at the half. And he slid into third, and then same thing. And he slid into home, and he said, Schaefer wins by a wins by a nose. And then he said, Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your kind attention. What a guy, Germany Schaefer. Josh Billings played some catcher, was a spare catcher. Billings batted 333. He had one hit and three at-bats in two games. 
Billings was with Cleveland from 1913 to 1918, so this was the end of his time in Cleveland. He continued in the major leagues until 1923. Josh Billings. John Peters was another catcher. Peters batted once, did not have a hit. He got he walked once and struck out once in one game. Peters was from Kansas City, Kansas. He died in Kansas City, Missouri in 1932 at age 38. Career average of 265 with seven home runs and 47 RBIs. Peters was with the Detroit Tigers in 1915 and the Cleveland Indians in 1918. He played for the Philadelphia Phillies from 1921 to 1922. In the minor leagues, Peters played for the Davenport Blue Sox, the Grand Forks Flicker Tails, Chattanooga Lookouts, Kansas City Blues, Birmingham Barons, and Hollywood Stars. John Peters. Now, the pitching staff, Stan Kovaleski was the ace pitcher. Kovaleski batted 191 with 21 hits and 110 at-bats, scored six runs, four doubles, three RBIs, walked twice, struck out 26 times in 38 games. Kovaleski's pitching record was 22-13. and 13. Tremendous with an ERA of 1.82. Wow. 38 games, 33 starts. 25 complete games, two shutouts, and a save. Kovaleski was with Cleveland from 1916 to 1924. One game against the Yankees, he pitched 19 innings in 1918 and won the game 3-2. 19 inning complete game. Stan Kovaleski. Jim Bagby was second in the rotation. Uh, Bag- Bagby batted 212 with 21 hits and 99 at bats. He scored five runs, three doubles, eight RBIs, a stolen base in 47 games. Bagby's pitching record was 17 and 16, with an ERA of 2.69. In 45 games, he made 31 starts, 23 complete games, two shutouts, and six saves. Bagby was with, Cle- was with Cleveland from 1916 to 1922. Jim Bagby. Guy Morton was third in the rotation. Morton batted 156, 12 hits and 77 at-bats, scored four runs, five doubles, a triple, two RBIs, walked four times, struck out 15 times in 30 games. Morton's pitching record was 14-8, and with an ERA of 2.64, 30 games, 28 starts, 13 complete games, and a shutout. And Morton was with Cleveland. From 1914 to 1924, Guy Morton. Fritz Coom was the fourth starter. Coom batted 214 with 12 hits and 56 at bats, scored three runs, had nine RBIs, nine uh, strikeouts in 32 games. His pitching record was 13 and 7, with an ERA of 3.06. 30 games, 17 starts, nine complete games, and three saves. And Coom was with Cleveland from 1914 to 1919. Fritz Coombe. Johnny Ensman was another pitcher. Ensman batted 149, seven hits and 47 at-bats, scored two runs, had a double, a walk, struck out 13 times in 30 games. Ensman's pitching record was 5-7, with an ERA of 2.37, 30 games, 14 starts, eight complete games, and two saves. Ensman was from Brooklyn, New York. He died in Riverhead, New York in 1984 at age 94. Career record of 11 and 12 with an ERA of 2.84. 91 strikeouts. Ensman pitched for the Brooklyn Robins in 1914, the Cleveland Indians from 1918 to 1919, and the Philadelphia Phillies in 1920. They called him Gentleman John. After he retired, he became a toolmaker until 1972. The minor leagues, he played for the Reading Keystones, the Newark Bears, and the Rochester Hustlers, Johnny Ensman. Bob Green was another pitcher. Uh, Bob Groom batted 283, one hit in 12 at bats, scored a run, struck out five times in 14 games. Groom's pitching record was 2-2 two two with an ERA of 7.06. 14 games, five starts, and 43 in the third innings pitched. Groom was from Belleville, Illinois. He died in Belleville in 1948 at age 63. Career record of 119 and 150. ERA of 3.10 with 1,159 strikeouts. Groom played 
pitch for the Washington Senators, St. Louis Terriers, St. Louis Browns, and Cleveland Indians between 1909 and 1918. He threw a no-hitter in 1917. In 1912 with the Senators, he won 24 games. In 1909, he lost 19 games in a row. After he retired, he, was, he managed the family's coal mine, Bob Groom. George McQuillan was another pitcher. McQuillan batted four times, did not have a hit, had a walk, struck out four times in five games. McQuillan's pitching record was 0-1 with an ERA of 2.35. Five games, a start, and a save. McQuillan was from Brooklyn, New York. He died in Columbus, Ohio in 1940 at age 54. Career record of 85-89 and 89 with an ERA of 2.38. 590 strikeouts. He pitched for the Philadelphia Phillies, Cincinnati Reds, Pittsburgh Pirates, and Cleveland Indians between 1907 and 1918. In 1907, he set a record. He pitched uh, 25. Uh, at, the be- at the beginning of his career, he pitched. He threw 25 innings pitched without without allowing a run. He's the Phil- Philadelphia Phillies career ERA leader with 1.79 ERA. Unfortunately, he developed alcoholism and syphilis. George McQuillan. Otis Lambeth was another pitcher. Lambeth batted once, did not have a hit in two games. He had no decisions as a pitcher with an ERA of 6.43, two games and seven innings pitched. Lambeth was with Cleveland from 1916 to 1918. This was the end of his MLB career. Otis Lambeth. Ed Brennan was another pitcher. He got it. He batted once. Or he got in one game, did not bat. He had no decisions as a pitcher, an ERA of 3.00 in that one game and three innings pitched. Brennan was from La Harpe, Kansas. He died in Kansas City, Missouri in 1962 at age 74. Career record of 37 and 36 with an ERA of 3.11 and 283 strikeouts. Pitch for the Philadelphia Phillies, the Chicago Federals, Chicago Whales, and the Washington Senators and Cleveland Indians between 1910 and 1918. 1915, he won a Federal League title with the Chicago Whales. Pitched in the minor leagues for the Atlanta Crackers. After he retired, he became the Fulton High School baseball coach for 20 years in Kansas City, Missouri. Ad Brennan. And finally, Roy Wilkinson was another pitcher. Got in one game, did not bat, had no decisions, and an ERA of 0.00 in that one game with one innings, one inning pitched. He was from Canandaigua, New York. Wilkinson died in Louisville, Kentucky at age 50, in 1956 at age 62, a career record of 12 and 31 with an ERA of 4.66 and 88 strikeouts. Wilkinson, Wilkinson played pitch for the Cleveland Indians in 1918 and the Chicago White Sox between 1919 and 1922. In the minor leagues, he pitched for the St. Louis, the St. Thomas Saints and the Louisville Colonels. After the season, World Series was played, and for the first time, the Star Spangled Banner was played in an MLB game at the 1918 World Series. The Chicago Cubs, the National League champions, were defeated by the Boston Red Sox, the American League champions, four games to two. This was the start of the Red Sox 80 year title drought, or the curse of Babe Ruth. A year later, they sold Babe Ruth to the, to the Yankees and started in which started the Yankees' rise to dominance in Major League Baseball. In the 1918 World Series, Babe Ruth and Sad Sam Jones played for Boston, and on the Chicago Cubs, star players included Grover Cleveland Alexander and Fred Merkel. So that's the story of the 1918 Cleveland Indians. They had a tremendous year. God bless everyone associated with the team, uh, including the Civil War veterans, Spanish-American War veterans, and the First World War veterans. And, uh, and also the fans and everyone else associated with the team. Uh, captains of the Cuyahoga, lovers of Lake Erie, Terminal Tower Power, fans of the Free Stamp Statue and the Fountain of Eternal Life, First Energy Stadium friends, Progressive Field pals, Quicken Loans Arena enthusiasts, Severance Hall stalwarts, Euclid Avenue Electricity, Electricity, Tribe, Browns, Cavs, Monsters and Gladiators Rule, Cleveland City of Champions. 
Tribe had a, had a good year. We can hold our heads high here in Cleveland, all the players and the fans as well. Fine year, and wait till next year. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.